Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to my home. I am barefaced, naked, and I'm doing this video because I did a get ready with me on my blog, and I was asked if I would possibly think about doing a video. So here I am. And what I want to stress to you is, even though the lighting is weird, I do not use any filters. I do not have any smoke and mirrors. What you see is what you get. This is 63 year old skin that hasn't been filled. Um, I've gone through skin cancer. I've gone through total abuse in the sun. My skin is not perfect, but what I try to do is look as humanly normal as possible. And that's where my love of cosmetics comes in. So if you choose to follow me and see how a real average woman in her 60s with wrinkles and lines and spots on her face and not the best skin gets ready, by all means, join me. And if you think this is just too much ugly for you to watch, bye girl, see you later. Okay, so here we are. I used primer this morning and the primer that I used is this primer by Hard Candy. It's called the Shine Free. This is actually one of my favorite primers at $8 at Walmart. I think it's an excellent, excellent buy. Um, you get enough, it lasts for a while. And what I like to do is I like to um, put it on about 20 minutes or maybe 15 minutes before the rest of my face makeup goes on. I start with the eyes simply because I'm the biggest slob on earth and I just, trust me, I get stuff all over the place. And that's why it's really important for me to have Q-tips or cotton like swab sticks and makeup remover pads. I always have these on hand. So let's go, let's try to do this. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but hey, uh, what can I say? Now, first step that I do, I turn this upside down. This is Well Rested by Bare Minerals. I have been using this stuff for years, and it's not so much that I have dark circles under my eyes. Ugh, this is the hard part because I'm absolutely blind. I have like bluish discoloration in the corner of my eyes. So I use this well rested to kind of um, tone it down a bit. So here we go. I put it basically all over and it actually makes a good base for any kind of eye makeup that you're going to put on. This brush that I'm using, by the way, it's a Vera Bradley brush and I got it, oh my God, I got this over 10 years ago. My daughter Una and I saw these Vera Bradley brushes online and they came in a nice kit. So we bought them and I swear to you, I wish Vera Bradley never discontinued these because they're really great brushes. So now that I can't see, um, I'm going to blend this a little bit more and I'm going to take my big mirror because trust me, I need the biggest magnifying mirror that I can get. And if you are my age or older, you know that your eyes are just not what they used to be. So I'm putting these glasses back on just for a minute. So I will put the brush back. And now I'm going to be working with two different palettes of eyeshadows. This eyeshadow palette by MAC 
I made this with individual colors. This color down here, quarry, is probably the most versatile, like universal color for all eyes. It is a great transition color. And I actually have this color in four palettes. And I did find a great dupe on um, in um, Essence Cosmetic. Um, the name of the shadow is Mouthy Time, and it was only $1.99, and it's a great dupe. I'm also going to be using another palette that I made, and this is Essence Cosmetics. It cost me less than $10 to make this palette. So I am a neutral person. So most of my, I mean, actually like 99.9% .9 of my shadows are all neutrals. I don't stray far from what I'm comfortable in. And especially for an everyday look, I don't want something that's going to make me look too, um, too colorful because I basically don't want to stand out. I'd like to blend in. So with this quarry, I will take this. And one of the brushes that I'm going to use is this kind of no-name brush, which is very good for just putting a transition color on. I always tap. And I just kind of, I don't swipe any shadows in anymore. I just kind of touch them in. And I, honest to God, I don't know how this is going to turn out simply because I can't see what I'm doing. Um, like, I can't even, I can't see to the point, well, here it is, where I couldn't find the eyeshadow. So, I tap, I tap in, I blow off or tap, and then I just go in. And I try to find where the natural shading is. And I kind of keep it in there. Then I'll go in with this wonderful brush that I got from Morphe. Hold on. I have to put my glasses on because I really, uh, like, I really can't see. Okay, so this blending brush, number 441 by Morphe is probably the greatest eyeshadow brush that I have because it blends so well. So now we have our transition shade. And as you can see, my eyes look just slightly darker on the lid and on the crease, but not too much. Next, I'm gonna take a highlighting color. And with that color, I'm going to use another brush. I don't like to use the same brushes for different shadow colors because I'm too lazy to clean them off. So here we go, right under the brow. Hold on, I really, I, I got to use the mirror, hold on. So I'll apply this right under the brow. That's one of the things about aging. It's like, wait, where did my eyesight go? It's like, where did my chin go? Where did my hair go? Oh, I know where my hair went. The hair on my head went to my chin. That's where it went. Why does that happen? Why do we wake up one day and our hair starts thinning over here? And then we look at our chin and we're like, oh, oh my God, I went out in public with that unslightly whisker that I could practically curl with a roller. Oh God, don't even get me started. Okay, so next I'm going to put some shadow in the crease to make it a little darker. Now with this, surprisingly enough, I like to use this foam tipped, I don't know if you'd call it brush, but I'll just call it an applicator. And this came in a Morphe set that I have. And I know a lot of people kind of discount these little applicators, but I honestly, I think that they're great because they really keep the product on. And um, it, if, a, if a product 
is heavily pigmented, you're going to get the most out of your product. So I'm really going to need my mirror for this. But what I do is I add this darker color in the corner of my crease because it just kind of brings out more definition in my eyes. Can you see that? And this color, by the way, that I'm using is Essence. It was also $1.99 for the single color. It is called Brownie Licious. And actually, it looks so good that you just almost want to eat it. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the other eye. And, you know, I want to add something which might sound crazy to you or might not. But when I was younger, I didn't really need a lot of makeup at all because my natural lashes were really dark. My eyebrows were super, super dark. I had very, very, very naturally dark eyes. So all I basically needed was a hint of liner and mascara. And I was good to go. I didn't even need brow product. But as I aged and my facial features started changing, I found that I needed more makeup. But I didn't want to wear makeup to cover anything up. I just wanted makeup to enhance what I used to have. Actually, I'm wrong when I say cover up. I do want to cover up the spots. But... I don't want to bring attention to my wrinkles. So I have to work really subtly. And I think when you reach a certain age, you need to come to the realization that makeup works for you and not against you and that you're just using it to enhance what you had. So now I'm going to take this Morphe brush again and I'm just going to go in a circular motion to blend this out. And uh, look, you're getting to look at stuff in my mirror. So I have the mirror. I'm telling you, this magnifying mirror is like a godsend for me. It's amazing. So I'm just going to blend and blend and blend and blend and blend. And that's the thing. I think when you are um, trying to put on makeup for every day, you really need to take the time out to have me time. Like when I wake up in the morning before I go to work, I wake up at six o'clock every morning like clockwork. Um, after I get ready in the bathroom, then I sit down in the room and we have a guest room upstairs. I sit down there and that is my me time. My husband makes coffee and brings it to me. And for that time, when I'm just getting my thoughts ready for the day, that's when I do my makeup and I take, I take pretty good care and I take time to apply it because the makeup that I'm wearing when I apply it in the morning, that's staying with me all day. I work in an office and I don't have time to refresh my makeup. So what goes on at six to seven o'clock stays on till six or seven o'clock in the evening. And I'm telling you, I never, ever have a problem with makeup wearing off because I make sure that I have the proper tools to apply the makeup so that it will stay on. And I have dry, I have very, very, very dry skin. And as you know, if you are of my demographic, we have a tendency to have dry skin. And that's why I use a good moisturizer in the morning and I use a good primer because I think both together lock the moisture in. I also spritz my face while I'm doing my makeup with refreshing like water. This happens to be Mario B. I picked this up on a whim, but I've used e.l.f. Um, like cucumber water. And I'll even when the bottles drop, you know, when all the product is used up in the bottles, I'll just put tap water in and spray my face. Because while I'm getting ready, it does add extra hydration to my face. Okay, so back 
back to the eyes because I'm going on and on and you're probably getting really bored. I'll take the color that I added in the crease and I'll put it, I'll line the bottom of my lid with it. I'm not going for a smoky look, but since I wear glasses, I like to have a little bit more definition with my eyes. Okay, so that's done. As you can see, my eyes do look dark. The lighting in my house is not the greatest and I'm not really good at making these videos. So this is the best that I can do for now. So after I do the shadowing with my eyes, I head straight for my brush, my little brow brush, and I head straight for my Anastasia dip brow. This Anastasia dip brow is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy good. I've had, I swear, I am not lying to you. When I tell you I've had this thing for at least, at least three years. And look, I hit pan, but there's still plenty of product to go around. Now, the brows that I once had were very thick. And I don't want my brows to be that thick anymore. I mean, I've seen so many people on Instagram and bloggers with these thick ass brows and like the brows look like railroad cars on trains. It's like, no, they don't have to be that thick. Um, my brows are a little wonky. I lost part of this brow when I had Mohs surgery for, um, you know, bad things that I did in the sun. So my brows are never twins. Um, I honestly have to do this through a mirror with my mirror because I can't see. So I'll just kind of trace my natural brow line. And I do have an arch. And I do try to bring the brow product down to where my eyeshadow has ended. So everything kind of looks like it's in tune. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference that a brow makes? Look. Oh my God, I can't even see that. I, I'm blind in my right eye, so I can't see. But look, look at the difference. Look at how, look at how the brow just opens up my face. It's amazing. And don't be afraid to make your brows look a little darker. I happen to like a dark brow, but I like it, as I said, I like it at a good width. I don't want it too thin and I don't want it as thick as a railroad car. Make it thick as a railroad car. It looks like they're gonna just drive right off your face. Okay, so. Hold on one minute, ladies. Don't be angry with me. Okay, so see? There's the brows. And already you can see that my face looks a lot better than it did. Next. Next is mascara. Now, I have a thing about mascara because mascara drives me totally crazy. Mascara never lasts too long, at least not the way that I use it because I pack it on. I'm one of those weird people that loves a clumpy mascara. I love clumpy mascara. I don't like that thin little like doodad mascara that just gives you a bare hint of lash, no. I can't wear false lashes because the glue really bothers my eyes. And it really takes a while to put the magnetic lashes on. So for every day, I just like a really good mascara. This mascara, this is called Get Big Lashes. It is $3.99 and it's from Essence Cosmetics. This stuff is the most incredible mascara ever. 
I put at least two coats on, usually three, and I don't use an eyelash curler. I don't think that they are really necessary, but let me go back to my mirror again and I'll talk while I'm putting this on. I mean, I don't know. How do you feel about mascara? How do you feel about fake eyelashes? I think fake lashes look absolutely beautiful when you're out for a special occasion, but for every day, I think it really, I, I think you really need to be an artist to be able to put them on in like two minutes because usually when I'm putting glue on lashes, even though I know the glue bothers my eyes, it takes me like a half hour because I can't get the lash to fall straight. Then either I put too much glue on or not enough. Then one eye will look really good and the other eye will look really wonky. So I am much better off, to tell you the truth, with just putting a ton of mascara on. Now, I will tell you, if you can afford it, I think the greatest product for getting longer lashes is Latisse. Um, when I had a great paying job before ageism set in, I used to have Latisse like constantly. I had a constant like supply of Latisse. And I am telling you, my lashes looked amazing. There were days where I didn't even need mascara. But then, you know, the harder, the older you get, the harder it is to find a job. And you'll never get that better paying job that you used to have. So you kind of look at things realistically and say, hey, this is money on the table and I am not, I'm not waiting for this fantastic job that I used to have. Right now I have a job that I happen to like a lot. I actually, actually I kind of love my job. So I'm very content there, but I would rather put the money into my 401k at this point in my life than into Latisse. So that's it. But I'm telling you, if you have the extra bucks, by all means, get Latisse because you won't even need mascara. So here we go. I have my little mascara on. Now I will put mascara on my bottom lashes, but I always wait till last to do that. My routine is very weird. Okay. So now that I have that done, I will put my glasses on. So maybe you can, can you see? I think you can see better when I have my glasses on because it makes my eyes look a little bit better. Okay, so next, where did it go? Next, I tight line my eyes. And I use this double um, eyeliner pen. Hold on. I don't, I, I don't know what to do. What are you doing? Okay, he's okay. He's my little chippy. So I use this. This is a double edged sword, so to speak. The thicker is for eyeshadow, and the thinner end is for lining eyes. Now, what I do, because I've discovered over the years, that as my eyes have aged, I stopped putting eyeliner on my lid. I tight line instead. And tight lining is when you're taking the liner and placing it as close to the lid as possible, but from the inside rather than the outside. And since I can't see, I'm gonna use the mirror because I don't want to poke my eye out. It's weird because I, I discovered the tight lining makes my eyes look bigger when I had a bad allergy day. About, I don't know, like maybe last 
summer, I had a really, really super bad allergy day. And my eyes, like I added eyeliner and my eyes just looked so much smaller. So I stopped using it. And then I decided to just tight line. And I've been a lot, I've been more pleased with the results. It takes a while. It takes a while to get the gist of this. And it's kind of difficult to do when you're talking to somebody. So you really need some quiet time to do this by yourself. Okay. The eyes are done. So now we're going to the face. Now, the foundation that I am going to use today is, where did I put it? Is by The Ordinary. And this is the coverage foundation. I have two. One is the serum foundation, and this is the coverage foundation. Surprisingly, the serum foundation does a better job of covering than the coverage foundation. But both are really, really great products. And I believe this, like this little nugget of foundation was less than $8. It's a budget foundation, but it goes on like a luxury product. I love to shake everything so that nothing oxidizes. And the good thing about this is that the top kind of locks, you have to move it to the side. And yes, I use my hand as a palette. And the other thing that I do is I add, thanks to Wayne Goss and thanks to Tati, I add a drop of argon oil to my foundation. I do this every day because it just makes for a more hydrating project, pro boot, product. Okay, so I'll put this on with my hands. And here's where I think the most important thing is. It's the blending. Because any foundation, if you don't blend it in correctly, it's gonna look cakey. Um, I know a lot of young girls put an awful lot of foundation on their faces and it looks like I'm putting a lot of foundation on, but when I blend this all in, trust me, it's going to look really great. Now, what I do is I use a Real Techniques blending sponge to blend this foundation in. There are some foundations that work better with a brush like the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation, that look, that works so much better working it in with a brush than with a blender. But for this particular foundation, I really love this beauty sponge. Um, I will say that you have to play around because what works for my skin may not work for yours. It may be easier for you to use your fingers to blend it in. It may be easier for you to use a brush to blend it in. But what works for me and this particular foundation is the sponge. So, again, I'm looking in my mirror because mama can't see. So I blend and blend and blend. And I blend. And I blend some more. I mean, the thing is, I don't want to look cakey. And I do have age spots and those freckles that were so charming and so adorable and so cute when I was younger have kind of morphed into those old lady age spots. And you know what? I have them. There's nothing, you know, I mean, I'm not going to spend the money by getting them like laser removed or anything like that. I'd rather use makeup. Okay. So now that I've blended this in with the sponge, I'm going to Give myself a spritz. 
of the cucumber water. And I'm going to just wait like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, just like a few seconds until it basically dries. Then I'm going to go in with this brush that I picked up at TJ Maxx for like $2.99. This is a great brush to kind of even out any of the foundation that may have like settled into any lines. And this is really important. And this is where I think it's really super important that as we get older, we have to work with the foundation in order to have it work for us. So, and this is a softer brush. This is not a hard, a very hard brush and it feels nice on the skin. Ooh, nice and fluffy. Okay, so that's done. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to take one of these makeup remover wipes. This happens to be Neutrogena. You can use any kind. I use diaper wipes for crying out loud sometimes. And I'm just ever so gently going to just tap this into my face. I don't know if you can see, but it took some excess off. It took a slight amount of excess off, but it also helps to set the foundation for during the day. Then I know this is crazy. You probably think I'm crazy at this point because I've wasted a half hour of your time. So I hope that you either have a refreshing drink or a glass of wine. Okay, then I take another brush and I buff. This brush, I think this is from Tarte, but I'm not sure. Yes, this brush is from Tarte. I'm not crazy about a lot of the Tarte cosmetics, but damn, their brushes are really good. I had one brush that was one of my favorites until my dog ate it, and I did manage to salvage it, but it's just not the same after Chippy ate it. So now, now I'm done. I am done with my foundation. But Next, I'm going to put concealer on. Where are you, concealer? Okay, this concealer is my favorite. This is by MAC, and the name of it is Pro Longwear Concealer, and the color that I have is NC, that's Neutral Cool, 15. Okay, now, I don't know why I shake this, because I don't really think that I have to. So. I just take like half a pump because this stuff is pretty amazing. Look at, this is all I use. That's like not a lot. So. I'll place some here. Because I wear glasses, I like to have a little brightener. And the skin on my nose has a tendency to just like, I have a little bit of rosacea. So just for extra insurance, I do use the concealer. And once again, I'm gonna blend the shit out of this. Hold on, I need my mirror. I know it looks pale, but after it's completely blended in, it really blends in nicely. And with my glasses, I'm telling you, girls who wear glasses and those who wear glasses and really need them, let me tell you something. The shadows that come from wearing glasses are pretty intense. So what you want to do is make sure that you do have some brightener on. Once again, I'm taking this wipe, the makeup remover wipe, and once again, I'm pressing because it does help. 
Okay, see? More. Now, am I done? No, I'm not done because I still need to buff the peeler in. So, where did my buff brush go? So, I'm going to buff some more. Don't you love the way that I can't edit? Because now you're seeing everything in real life. Okay, so that's done. Now, I do like to contour. Contouring is something that I only became familiar with maybe the past year and a half. Um, so I find that it really helps to define um, the bone structure of your face. Now, I, because my skin is on the cool side, I like a taupey, um, almost gray contour. This contour is the Matchsticks by Fenty Cosmetics. And let me tell you, I love, I, I, I freaking love this. This is one of my favorite contours. It's creamy, but it doesn't fade during the day. You put this on at six o'clock in the morning and at six o'clock at night, it's still on your face. Um, basically, contouring is just to kind of have that shade and definition. I do put it on my cheeks and I will contour my nose a little and that's it. So let me look in the mirror again because I need to do that. Okay, so I'll just start with a line and then kind of color, almost like I'm an illustration in a coloring book. And then I'll just add a little to the tip of my nose Starting at the eyebrow, I'll just trace a line and that's it. And no, I am not going to go out like this. I am not a color by number living picture. I am going to blend this in with my beauty, with my Real Techniques blending sponge. And I just kind of blend easily. This stuff, this Fenty um, matchsticks is great because it really does a great job of blending in so naturally. It's unbelievable. I love it. Okay, so there we go. Now, next is blush um there are a lot of blushes i have blushes that are all creams with the exception of one the only blush that i have that is not a cream is by laura geller and it's one of those baked products and it's really good and i I usually use it during the summer when it's hot and humid and sweltering. And today the weather is crappy. So I have decided to go with this Vitality Lip and Cheek Stain by IT. There's not a lot of IT cosmetics that I use because their CC creams, their foundations, even their face creams are horrible for me. They just don't work for me. My skin is just way too dry. But their lip, the, the, the It Cosmetics lip products are freaking amazing. And this serum stick, it's the color is actually called Je Ne Sais Quoi, but it kind of, it's almost like one of those mood rings that changes color. So I'll just put a little swipe on the apples and it's kind of gentle it gives you a nice natural flush and I'll just blend it in so 
so that everything kind of looks natural. So now you can see that I've gone from like pretty dang ugly to like human looking. But the lips have it next. Now, since I'm home today, I'm not going to do the lining of my lips or anything like that. I'm just going to put a simple gloss on because I do want a hint of color. And what I'm using today is this Fenty Gloss Bomb. When I first saw this, I was like, ooh, that's a little bit warm for my cool coloring. But you know what? Actually, it's not. It's one of those universal glosses that just kind of looks good on everybody. So hold on. I'm just going to run my fingers across my wrinkly mouth and I'm going to apply this gloss. See? You can see how pretty it is already, just at the top. Uh, see, it gives it gives a nice caramel color, almost like a J Lo thing on the lips. Here we go. It's nice and shiny. And I don't know about you, even when I wear a matte lip, I have to put gloss on it. I'm of that 80s generation that just loves big, shiny lips. I don't know what it is. And then I will just go over with a clear gloss. Mm. This Neutrogena is so good. Now, I told you before that the last thing that I do is put mascara on my bottom lashes. I'm not going to do that today because I really, I really can't see. But I will say that when you are putting mascara on your bottom lashes, you really need to be careful because that's, that's where these Q-tips come in. I'm telling you, I am the biggest slob on the face of the earth, and it's kind of sad. But wait, what am I missing? I'm missing my hair. So the hair is always the last to go on. So let me take my glasses off. And today I'm wearing Jameson from Aesthetica Designs. She's my ultimate favorite bob because she is a classic bob. And normally, I'm going to be honest with you, Normally, I put my lip color on after I put my hair on because just as I did now, I got lip gloss on this wig and I'm going to have to wash it. So let me just adjust the ear tabs. Let me comb the ends. One thing about fake hair, you still have to comb it, but you're guaranteed a great hair day. Like the weather is really iffy out today. And if I had all my bio hair, I would be cursing the weather because my hair would be going in 17 different directions. But with a wig, it's not. So let me finish adjusting this. And that's it um okay this took 45 minutes and normally it only takes me a half hour because i have my mirror in front of me so things work out a little better um i don't know if you're gonna like this tutorial so you know if you like it thumbs up if you don't like it i you know i'm not going to be insulted but Another thing that we forget, the very last thing is fragrance. Um, my favorite fragrance over for the summer is Fragonard Fleur d'Anger. Um, it's very nice and clean, but I picked this 
brand perfume up in France a couple of summers ago. The name of the brand is Adopt. And these little falcons are like seven euros. And the scent of this is old amber. And oh my God, it smells so good. It's a little bit of a masculine scent, but man, oh man, I love it. And I think scent is something that we definitely need to wear every day. So that's it. That's the end of my get ready with me. I'm so sorry. And my apologies that I don't have um, a better lighting system, but it's what you see is what you get. This is unfiltered. This is the average woman. Um, there are no smoke and mirrors and we need to be more transparent. Over the past week, two people left us that were a big influence on our lives, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain. Um, both, both were huge, huge influences. Kate Spade had a great sense of style Anthony Bourdain really, really changed the way that I look at food and travel and culture, and he changed it for the better. Um, I think with social media and this need, this desire to be just like perfect, no wrinkles, um, everything's got to be just so. And that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of glad I don't have the best system. I don't want filters. I want people to see me as I am, 63 years old and average. I'm not the prettiest flower. I'm not the most perfect speci specimen there is. But you know what? I'm average and I try and I can only do my best. I can't do any more of that. So if you agree with me and if you kind of like my philosophy, subscribe. If you don't and you just think I'm a psychotic person that is a pathetic person, then don't subscribe or subscribe so I can be that person that you love to hate. Okay, that's it. Have a great day. I am now off to do some writing and be kind, have fun, watch a good movie. Watch the, um, go to Netflix and watch Hearts Unknown so you can travel and see how wonderful Anthony Bourdain truly was. Bye. Love you.